proud to be Canadian in the sense that I love all the different cultures, but everybody has an identity. If we don't uh, you know, pay attention to our identity uh, going back, and the artwork really is uh, one of the only ways to really teach our identity, then we can get lost in the mix. Uh, well, I've been doing some design work, and how I design is, it started off when I was five years old. My oldest brother, he was a great artist already, and I looked at his work and says, wow, I want to be able to do that. So I grabbed paper and pencil and started drawing, and I never stopped. The artwork was the only hard copy of our culture going back, and it's the only thing that really embodies the lessons and the teachings of you know, our ancestors and people down the line. We're very uh, tied spiritually to our sort of unconscious state. Sometimes these designs just, wow, it just blows me away and say, wow, how did I design that? Uh, a lot of my artwork comes out of my dreams. It's where our ancestors and, uh, and our guides meet with us. And a lot of our cultural background is based on our spirituality and how we look at uh, our ancestors and what our responsibilities are. If I'm taking a break, I sit down and think about my ancestors and say, wow, I wonder if I'm doing this right or not. Usually the elders are proud of you when you're doing something and you're doing it in a good way. It's largely about responsibility and our culture. I mean, my granny was a matriarch in our community. Uh, she raised, uh, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 children at a time uh, off of basket weaving. During some of the dark times, our arts and crafts were the only thing that sort of kept food coming in the door. And when a lot of our people would sort of lose their way via, you know, either alcoholism or other problems, you know, she would take on their children. And in our communities, we have a term for that. In our language, it's called the wanoch, and it means responsibility. We have very few elders left, so it is important that they passed it on to us and that it's important that I will have to pass it on to others, which I have. I pass it on to my boys, my daughter, and giving them those tools so that they can carry it and pass it on themselves. So it becomes a responsibility to carry it. The Thunderbird it represents power, it represents courage, and it represents prestige. But the prestige is based on what it does with the power and courage. But it's something supernatural, you can't see it but that's where the big winds would come from. It would come down the valley there, and that's where the, the Thunderbird creates a big wind with its wings, moves its wings, and then when the, when the thunder happens, it hits together and creates the thunder, and it blinks its eyes for the lightning. The Thunderbird uses its strength to protect the people, to, to work for the people, and therefore is revered like a deity. That's imbued within the art. When you think of that symbol, the Thunderbird, and the stories that go along with it, we inculcate this into our children so that they help their, their fellow people in our community. We're going to one day become one of the ancestors. The hope in these stories will carry on to help the next generations our way down the line. At the beginning, it was hard to be Aboriginal, and I thought it was, I wasn't proud to be who I was, but eventually, as I got older, I learned more about myself and I'm proud of who I am. The ones that are proud of their history and their culture are the ones that do better in school, or the ones that succeed because they're proud of themselves and, you know, and they, they have some belief system. The benefits uh, myself, but it also benefits the youth, and it'll benefit the ones that aren't here yet. And it's helped me, uh, helped me grow and heal and, and learn to uh, share that and apply it to my life. We realize that things are mass produced. These are the realities that we live in. If we can, within that sort of uh, environment, if we can protect our economy and our culture, that's what's important. And the resources are going back to us and our communities where they're desperately needed. You have control over the design and the artwork of that product, and the benefits, by and large, are going back to you and your community. 80% of the Aboriginal themed gift wear out there has nothing to do with Aboriginal people. There's, there's no Aboriginal involvement in it. And it's, it's like they've taken a cliche of a design and then they've splashed it on mugs or backpacks or this or that and, and you know all the resources have gone towards a non-Aboriginal company or person. In Canada, the most marginalized, impoverished communities are Aboriginal communities. 
you know, we're hoping that the consumer wants to make sure that that's alleviated by the purchase of our artwork, which is our gift to you. We want you to have the real thing. There's meaning within our artwork. These sort of romanticized visions of somebody, you know, whittling away with a stone ads for like three weeks so that somebody can buy a little plaque for twenty dollars is it's not realistic. We do evolve in time, so that version of authenticity probably wouldn't uh, suffice. But what would suffice is knowing that this is from us. As long as it's getting out there in the world that people are seeing Coast Salish design and uh, they're getting to know that we are here, we're not invisible people, we're alive and we're, we are still practicing our culture.